Hey everybody, it's Ia Patsy. I'm here um, winding down my little um, spur of the moment vacation. First of all, congratulations to my granddaughter, Alicia, and my grandson, Ezekiel, for graduating um, from high school. And they're going on to college. They're gonna be starting to do that in, they're gonna be leaving, I think in August to, uh, go to their colleges, separate colleges. Um, I guess they've had enough of this twin thing. And so I'm just uh, very proud of them, proud of my family, my sister Lorraine. Um, I wanna thank her millions and millions of times for what all that she's done um, to help raise the children, along with my mom and their mother, my daughter and doing everything that they needed to do to get them to this stage and this place. So again, I am very proud of them and um, look forward to greatness continuing from here on in. So I was able to see, spend time with my family, got to see my mom and my sisters um, and our friend, Mr. Bill, who has been friends of our family since the 1980s and uh, it was just good to see people. I got to see my girlfriend Stephanie and we spent the uh, evening together hanging out and doing our nails and talking and just catching up and just reminiscing about how we first met and, and working at Chase before she uh, had her daughter. She was actually um, pregnant with her daughter when we met and her daughter has grown up into to be a lovely beautiful young lady Aisha Courtney and uh, also her son Nima um, both of them are grown up and they've finished college and they're you know doing their lives um, no grandchildren for her yet but she's a, a lot younger than me so she has time um, and just enjoying being out and on, you know, I haven't had a vacation in, in quite a while, so um, enjoying my visit. And now I have come down to um, North Carolina and I am going to be visiting today um, with my past worthy matron, Mary, and I'm going to go stay with her. And tomorrow I'm taking the train back to New York. A nice leisurely nine and a half hour ride from uh, North Carolina to New York City and then back home to Long Island so I just wanted to catch up um, I had made a video the other night but the <sighs> volume didn't work for some reason now that could have been because I started to um, a rant about the uh, election and all of that so I'm thinking that's the reason why um, the sound didn't take. Um, so I'm just going to see whether or not it takes today. So we have had a very interesting election cycle. I'm hoping and urging everyone out there to please look at the choices, look at what's going on in the world, and to vote for the Democrats. Up and down the ticket, um, there's no comparison between Joe Biden, the President of the United States, versus 37, what is it, 34 guilty indictments, 34, 37, whatever it is, um, of the other candidate uh, who has already served as a president once before and created panic, carnage, just like he promised in his uh, inaugural address back in 20, uh, 2016, I guess, whenever they inaugurated him. <coughs> Come to find out that um, he cheated um, and he had help from newspapers, uh, the 
National Enquirer, WikiLeaks, and Russia, regardless of what, whatever report um, they did and came back inconclusively or whatever, they all know, we all know, that Putin helped Trump to steal the election from Hillary Clinton. Yes, I said it. So, we are hoping, I am hoping, that the United States gets it together and rejects this traitor, this insurrectionist, this demented, sociopathic, narcissistic person who has promised to be a dictator on day one, was promised to get revenge on his perceived enemies, and that would be anybody that didn't vote for him. And it will be the people who did vote for him but didn't give him enough votes to let him steal another election. And uh, so no one's safe. None of us is safe. And a lot of people seem to have forgotten what life was life, was like was like dealing with Donald Trump in the White House, the um, disregard for uh, tradition, the disregard for security, um, clearances, um, overriding the investigatory um, agencies that look into people whether or not they should have security clearances or not. Donald Trump is a convicted felon right now. I don't see how he could, you know, be trusted with national secrets. He's desperate right now. And the only reason he ran for president in the first place, all right, is because he knew that he would be in this position because he knows he's a crook and he knew that he would need to be come president again in order to, you know, get rid of these cases or to pardon himself or anything like that. Um, and it's, it's a scary situation. He's acting like dictators all around the world do. He admires dictators. Um, he admires mob bosses. He thinks he's one. Um, and it's just very disheartening and frightening, especially when you've grown up during the 60s and the 70s, the 80s and 90s, and you see the progress that we've made, and you also know the history of the United States and the quest, the quest to remain a democratic country and all of the hopes and dreams of our parents, our grandparents, our great-grandparents, our ancestors who fought in wars to keep us free, to um, fight against communism and fascism and racism and hate and the America that Donald Trump is proposing for us is all of the negativity that he brings and that he is and his family they're grifters they are just in everything for themselves um, rather than you know going after Hunter Biden, who has been through so much in his life and so much loss and so much pain and is probably um, predisposed to addictions because of the accident that he and his brother and his mom and his baby sister were involved in years ago that took his mother's life, his sister's life, and caused him and his brother to spend many, many months in the hospital right after their father was first voted into Congress. I remember Joe Biden being the youngest senator in the Senate, and now he is the oldest person who's ever been elected to the presidency. And uh, to see that, those, that, that change, um, 
being criticized for being so young and now being criticized for being so aged. But with his age comes his wisdom, his experience, his ability to talk to others across the aisle. Um, he's been uh, shamed for being friends with some of the older senators who are no longer with us, who were separatists, uh, segregationalists, members of the KKK even at some point. But when he came to Congress and suffered that terrible, terrible loss, those other senators rallied around him and encouraged him to remain in the Senate and not to give up. And they helped him um, by encouraging him and by helping him to take care of those babies while they were in intensive care for such a long time. And he was able to make friendships, even though they may have disagreed on certain policies and things like that, there was still decency and there was still, you know, um, being cordial to one another and not attacking one another um, the way they do these days. Um, he's not perfect, but he's a whole lot better than anybody on the Republican end of things right now, especially Donald Trump. And um, Donald Trump's vice president, Mike Pence, won't even endorse him and is not going to vote for him. Now, whether he's going to vote for um, Biden or not, I'm not sure. I think he said he would. But if your vice president isn't going to endorse you, that says a lot right there. We know that he sent the mob from, he sent the mob down to attack democracy and to put fear in the hearts of the senators and of Mike Pence. But Mike Pence, for once, stood up for America, stood up for himself, and did the right thing. So, we've gone through a lot as a country ever since Donald came down that brass escalator of his, and the United States has been embarrassed on the national stage constantly. Americans were anxious. Americans have been experiencing divisions in the family, political divisions, um, that have really, you know, stopped friendships, stopped fam familial relationships, and has just caused so much confusion. We've gone through the pandemic. We've had so many people who've lost their lives who've lost their livelihoods, who've lost their homes because of the mishandling of the pandemic, because Trump thinks he knows better than everybody. He's more of an expert than all of the experts. He's got more scientific information than any of the scientists or the doctors. And just his narcissism is what caused the loss of so many lives during the pandemic. And I just want to, again, let you know how serious this is. How serious this is for women. We've lost our rights to our bodies. We've always um, been very strong voters, women, in this country, and they want to take the vote away from women because they blame women for Obama being elected and for Trump not being elected. So you're trying to turn us into the handmaiden's tale and control our children, control their bodies, forcing people to have children that they may or may not be ready for, forcing people to make choices 
in their lives that they would have never made before. Forcing young women to be afraid of the consequences that could come about from rape, incestual rape, um, just regular pregnancies that are wanted but can't thrive because of the uh, whatever the physical medical considerations are. Some pregnancies just are viable. Um, some women need DNCs because they have endometriosis. Those types of decisions that should be left to a woman and her doctor um, are now being challenged and threatened with loss for all of us. And these loss, this loss of autonomy when it comes to your sexual health, to your reproductive health, to women's bodies in general, for what reason? Forcing people to have children, to put them up for adoption, forcing people not to be able to get in vitro so that they'll be forced to adopt if they want to extend their families or begin their families. And those babies that don't get adopted will go into some type of private orphanage system, just like the private prison system. And uh, people like DeVoy, or whatever her name was, who was in charge of the Department of Education, will have more bodies and brains to brainwash turn into little soldiers, turn into little magas, and teaching children to disrespect their parents, telling them that the only reason that you're here is because we had uh, stopped abortions, because if it was up to your mothers, you wouldn't be here. Turning children against their parents, their mothers especially, and making them grateful for the government that came in and saved their lives from their selfish parents, their selfish mother's choices. Um, this is also revenge for men who have felt that because women are the ones who make the decision about what we're going to do with our bodies, they've been resentful of that ever since Roe versus Wade because the women had the right to make the choice and they just had to go along with it. And terminations, miscarriages affect men just as much as live births and becoming fathers. And for some of them, they had to accept that the women in their lives wanted to have terminations or had to have terminations. And they feel like their voices were not heard and that, ch that they didn't have any choices to either have children or not. So, for some of those bitter brothers out there, um, this is their way of reestablishing themselves as the heads of the household, as men, as alphas, and uh, it's just sad. And it's just really unfair. I think it does bring up the idea that maybe we should counsel men and boys when they're in these situations, when they're, the women in their lives have had miscarriages or had um, terminations by choice or out of necessity. And I think that would do us all a lot of good if we started to pay attention to the mental health of the women as well as the men involved in these situations. Um, forcing women to have their um, rapist babies and then bring those children into contact with those men who have raped them and forcing them to, you know, create a, a parental situation with these criminals. Um, it's just 
horrible for women and for their psyche and for our feeling of safety and protection. So I just want everybody to take these little things into consideration. These little things are really big things. Um, the economy is doing well, even though there's inflation. The inflation is because corporations are greedy. There was a problem with the supply chain after um, COVID and we were paying the prices and so these corporations have been milking it. Um, the president has no control over gas prices. The president has no control over grocery prices. The Federal Reserve has decided to continue their um, interest rate, which is, uh, they haven't raised it again, but they haven't lowered it as they had promised and as we were anticipating. So all of these things together, even though it's putting a strain on our households, it has created a situation where the United States has had the best recovery of all the nations in the world after the pandemic and has put us back on track to continue being the world leader. And um, so we're, we make, we're making money. Um, Joe Biden has created a situation where um, leaving, allowing us to use U.S. resources for gasoline has allowed some of the prices to go down. And at the same time, by doing that, he's put more money back into the Treasury to help um, diminish that trillions, what is it, $8 trillion deficit that was created by that tax break that was given to the rich. And that's his plan. Trump's plan is to get back in office and extend those tax um, rebates, those tax cuts to them. And He's even talking about putting tariffs on imported goods and getting rid of the IRS. Well, getting rid of the IRS and increasing the tariffs on products coming in from other countries is only going to cost the American people money. And uh, there was a report stating that that idea will cost American families, average American family, which is uh, two parents, two kids, or a family of four, it will cost $5,000 extra per year because now you're paying higher because if the countries have to pay a tariff to sell their goods here, it's gonna be passed on to the consumers. So it's gonna cost the average family of four an extra $5,000 a year on top of what we are dealing with now. So if you think inflation is bad, imagine that plus an additional $5,000 per year. And that's only if you have an average family of four. On the other hand, rich families would gain $1.5 million per year per family, those in the 1% to the 10% of the uh, income. Now, why would, why would we vote for that? Why would we want that? The IRS does what the IRS does. There will be no more deductions. There'll be none of that. You would just deal with paying at the pump and paying at the store for the tariffs that he wants to impose on other countries. It's ridiculous. It's stupid. It makes no sense, and it's not in the best interest of any regular Americans. So, just look into these things, you know, Google these things, listen to podcasts. Um, watch C-SPAN if you want to see what's going on in Congress, you know. Um, you don't have to get it filtered through mainstream media or um, the dark 
web. You can watch C-SPAN C, C 1 or C-SPAN 2, and you can hear what goes on in Congress and in the Senate. You know, um, you can watch MSNBC. You can watch CNN. But Fox has already been fined millions and millions of dollars for lying to the American people all through Trump's presidency. So why would you watch them? And maybe you don't know that because Fox isn't telling you that they were fined all this money for what they did. They just paid it. And uh, they're not giving their viewers the truth. So anyway, that's part of my rant. So today I'm going to go visit with Mary, get on the train tomorrow, and make my way back to New York. But I do want to say I do like the weather here. Um, I don't feel like I've been sweating profusely. Um, I've been out in the morning, the afternoon, and the evenings, walking around, um, riding around. I've got to see parts of a little bit of South Carolina um, because the gas is a little cheaper. And I was uh, like a little tour of the area. And um, I like it here. People are nice. And my concern was the weather being too hot, but it's not. It's warm. It's been up to 88 degrees since I've been here. But I haven't really had to, you know, go above and beyond uh, to keep cool. Um, matter of fact, the air conditioning in my hotel was a little too much cool for me. Um, but I've been enjoying it. And I'm glad to have made this trip. And uh, now I have some things to, to, to look forward to, to make decisions that at least I know I can handle living here. Um, where I am in uh, Charlotte is elevated, um, so it's a different type of humidity than in New York, where I'm right by the water, right? New York is an island, and Long Island is an island, and where I live, Freeport is a port. So there's water, so there's a different type of humidity. And here, since it's elevated, it's different. That's how it's being explained to me. The prices in the stores are quite cheaper. Um, I went to, I had um, a drink and some pot stickers at Friday's and came to $15.14 and it was like seven pot stickers and a pretty nice mojito. Well done. And uh, so that was cool. Um, I've ordered food and the prices are reasonable. Um, I have Uber, so I'm not paying, Uber Eats, so I'm not paying for deliveries. So it was nice. And like I said, it's been pretty it's been warm, but it hasn't been insufferable for me. So that's a good point. So anybody, I want thanks for listen. I want to thank you all for listening to me. Don't forget to subscribe and share these videos. Make comments. Um, let me know if you've ever been to North Carolina. Have you? Um, what your experience has been living there? Um, whether you moved from another state or you or were born and raised here. Let me know what your thoughts are about Charlotte, Concord, uh, Davidson, um, and other places in this area. And I'll be getting back to you guys real soon. Um, I love you all, and uh, talk to everybody real soon. Peace. I love you.